kissed and received. Most of all, here's a toast to you and to me. And breakfast with Bob. Cheer-hoo. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody. Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, ranked number 30 on the PTO. I like that. Ruth Astle joins us from the beautiful UK. How are you doing, Ruth? Yeah, really good, thank you. Really nice to be out here. I love it. So we haven't chatted much before, so I wanted to get more of your background. Tell me a little bit about growing up and what were your sports? Um, I was one of the many women, it seems, that played field hockey. Yes. (laughs) As my main sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did like a little bit of everything. I kind of... You know, did a bit of cross country, not properly, but right. kind of got thrown into it. I think in England, lots of people do it, getting yes. thrown into the mud. Um, I tried a bit of rowing, but I was too short. I even tried a bit of rugby, wasn't very good at that. Um, <laughs> so like, I tried loads of different things, but yeah, mainly field hockey. That's kind of what I did, mainly through school and right. uni. When did you find that endurance was, was your thing? Uh, I think I always knew that endurance was more my thing than speed. Um, I was always the one on the hockey pitch that just ran around a lot and had (laughs) basically zero skill. (laughs) (laughs) So I just ran around, kind of tried to do lots of getting in people's faces. But yeah, I was never the person kind of dribbling around. Scoring the goals. No, No, that wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Nice. And when did triathlon come in? Um, I did my first one in 2014. I actually did the London try as my first try. That um, water is always pretty chilly, I hear. Uh, it wasn't not too bad, bad okay. actually. No, okay. Not compared to here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> this, freezing. It is freezing. Um, but yeah, I did that just through work. They had a charity space. It seemed fun. I was training for Berlin Marathon at the time, and I was a bit bored of just running. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'd kind of I'd swam a little bit as a kid. Not properly, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd be better. But um, And I'd done a little bit of cycling. So I kind of thought, yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Um, and I just started work kind of in London at that point. And what type of work were you doing? Uh, so I was working for Lloyds Bank. Oh, um, real I, job. A real job, yeah. yeah. At that point, I was just like on the grad schemes, had like a few different placements uh, in different parts of the business. But um, yeah, I kind of thought, oh, I'll try and join a local tri club. It's a good way of meeting people. Sure. And it kind of fell into it from there. Kind of did all these local London League races. Then I heard about kind of doing the age group you know representing GB and I was like that sounds really cool so that was then my next mission and I qualified for Chicago in 2015. Yes I was there that was good race that That was fun yeah right down drive I like it yeah but realized that my swim and my run were nowhere nowhere near fast enough at that kind of Olympic level to do anything so then started going a bit longer Uh, I did 70.3 world champs in 2016 okay um and came third in my age group. But before that, I'd done Alp Duez as my first kind of longer Wow, and uh, you, you dug that. I like, I actually <laughs> had a really bad day in terms of like, I was a bit sick. I like, I think I tried to sodium load, but with like pure salt, <laughs> it didn't go very well. <laughs> so my tummy was in absolute bits, uh, but absolutely like. Nothing better it. than trying something yeah. maybe you haven't done before, before I a know. race that's up at Stupid. altitude <laughs> with a cold lake and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, but it was great. So then I was like, actually, it seems that, you know, my strength was on the bike. So I was like, longer's better. So did my first Ironman in 2017 at Lanzarote. And how that, oh, so you go um, right to Lanzarote, you go to one of the toughest Ironmans yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Optuez, um, I see a, I see a pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how well, that? But you love that one too. Uh, I actually know. Again, a bit of a disaster. Um, <laughs> I was sick in the swim, sick on the bike, and spent the whole marathon trying to find every portaloo I could find. Yes. And um, still managed to. There weren't many women in my age group racing, so yeah. I managed to come third. I managed to get my Kona slots. The lady that won already had a slot, yes. and the lady at the second didn't want it. So yeah. oh, I was like, great, go. I can go to Kona, and surely Kona's going to seem easier after that horrible, <laughs> horrible experience. Yes. Um, and it did. So, yeah, then I did. The, the first Kona was good for you? First Kona was good. Um, I was third in my age group, and I think 10th overall. Um, and, yeah, just really enjoyed it. I was like, I think Iron Man's my thing. And, uh, yeah, spent the next two years being like I want to win Kona and then I can go pro 
<laughs> it was my plan. That was the plan. That was the plan. Uh, right. And then what happened? Um, so in 2018, I won my age group, but I was third overall. So is that right? We've got to try again. Yeah. Uh, I then got into the Zwift Academy in 2019, yeah. which was brilliant, like amazing experience. Um, everything on track. I did Challenge Roth, had like a pretty oh, good. The best experience ever. Yeah. And for me, that was my third. And that was still age group. That was the age okay. group, and that was my 30th birthday in Roth, and like, I was running through the towns, people were singing happy birthday to me. Uh, oh, it was like, the, insane. The beer mile, it was all so cool. stuff. Yeah. Um, Solar that hill was on your birthday, I don't think there could be anything much better than that. No, it's A bunch brilliant. of drunk German people toasting you on your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'd highly best. recommend it. <laughs> I would <laughs> highly just, recommend just it. just tell people it's your birthday and then they'll... <laughs> they'll, they'll, be, they'll, they'll <laughs> Do they it. don't need many reasons to drink. No. Yeah, um, so yeah, that was good. So I was really looking forward to Kona. And then three weeks after Challenge Roth, um, I was involved in a crash with one of my friends. I saw the... Saw yeah, there, yeah. Uh, a car decided to just pull across us. He took the brunt of the car. Yeah. Uh, I was really lucky. I just had a collarbone and um, a big gash in my face. But um, yeah, that was 13 weeks before Kona. Oh. Um, so I was like, oh, panic. Uh, I was like hurriedly looking at kind of Lucy Gossage's thing about coming back and making lemonade out of lemons when she did her collarbone, yeah, I think yeah. six weeks before yeah, Kona yeah, or something. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I had surgery, which is love, hence the lovely scar. Um, but in some ways it was quite nice because it took the No pressure, pressure at all, right? You're just out there going whatever yeah. happened. Nobody's expecting me to finish. Yeah. So actually it was it was nice and um I did the seventy point three worlds in Nice first. That was like five weeks post op. I'd literally been back swimming for a week <laughs> but thought, why not? I'll give it a go. And it was um yeah, it was like I've loved that race and then that bike ride is oh, uh it's great. It's yeah, you gotta be <laughs> a bike it. handler. You, but you you liked it. I loved it. Um and that gave me the confidence to be like, Okay, I quite enjoyed that. So Kona, you know, I've got another six weeks or whatever it was and yeah, then Kona went pretty well. So. How, how'd you do there? <laughs> uh, I won. <laughs> you won your age division. Uh, I won the overall age group race. Yeah. And um, even after broken collarbone. Yeah. So that's when you're going. Okay, I can go pro now. Yeah, and I think like I won it um, in a way that made me feel that I can go and be competitive, as opposed to like I'm going to go and be a pro and I'm going to be hanging off the back and it's right. not going to be very fun. You went off the front. Um, no, but more as in like my time was like where it was relative to some of the pros. Mm. I was like, okay, it's not miles away. So. Oh, gotcha. And yeah. what was the difference between being a pro and being an age grouper? Because a lot of times people think, oh, I look at my time, I look at their time, yeah. it's not that much different. It's a different game. Yeah, 100%. I think um, as a female pro in particular, like there's a lot less of us. So uh, you actually spend most of the race on your own. Right. At, or like you might yeah. have one or two people around you, but generally it's kind of way more this is a solo race whereas as an age group woman you're generally surrounded by men um slash lots of other like people. it or not yeah 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 so but yeah like i think there's still some of the really nice things from i think competing as an age grouper like i think there's still that camaraderie on the totally. start line um everyone seems very kind of supportive and it just you mean they're not hugging it out at the start of the pro race for the women yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's the same. It's the same. Maybe not quite like hugging in but, COVID but, but, times. But, <laughs> but I still think but the thing that's the same, it's still you against you. Yeah, right? In age group or pro. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to psych somebody out. <laughs> no, I <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really is so. a, it's, it, yeah, you against the course at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Very fun. And so, mm -hmm. but you in, enjoyed making that move to pro. Um, I mean, I did, but then obviously COVID hit, and I was yeah, like, no, oh, I've uh, made an absolute shocker here. <laughs> <laughs> Turning pro just as COVID has uh, exactly. come in. Um, but yeah, fortunately, in some ways, I think it helped. Like, it gave me more time to improve to everything. Train, yeah. um, and then obviously, we had various races getting put on, so I still managed to go and get a bit of experience. Yeah. Um, I came out and did Florida um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like again, it wasn't like a brilliant race, but that's actually where I got my slot for here <laughs> uh, back then. Yes. Um, but again, it was just like a good experience, really enjoyed it. Um, I was actually staying with Kat, so to see her win was like epic. And um, yeah, I think from there, I feel like I've come quite a long way in terms of where I'm at. So yeah. 
We'll see. And well, and from that that experience, uh, you've obviously been in this course a lot. So we'll talk a little bit about the challenge of this course. Um, so I've only actually seen the back part of the bike. Okay. That's kind of all I've done. So yeah. I only got here Friday evening. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I think perfect for me <laughs> in terms of the bike course. Well, yeah, you're um, talking Lanzarote, uh, you're talking up the races you've done. Yeah, like it's just, it's a tough bike course. Like for Which me, I like. much prefer that. Right. Um, and I think there's quite a lot of potential for it to be windy as well, which again, like I'm quite aero, so it suits me. Nice, <laughs> nice. If there's a bit of wind. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately it's just, it's gonna be a really, really challenging race. So it's yes. gonna be who can be patient, who can, kind of try and play a bit of a smart game, I guess. And um, yeah, hopefully one of them is me. <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, then you just come off of 70.3 California, mm. or Oceanside. I'm sure you're not very happy with ninth, but you're <laughs> racing all the, uh, all the IT, yeah, all the speed demons, <laughs> yeah. right? So you prefer the full to the 70.3, I'm guessing. Yeah, at the moment, I think until I can get my swim to be more competitive, right. um, I think, 70.3s at the moment it's just too much of a gap for me right. to make up yeah um and again like even with my run as well you know like i think it's getting there over the full distance mm. but you know i'm not running 116s 117s yet no yet yet but you'll Soon, get there hopefully <laughs> now did you, did you have a camp up in flagstaff yep so just spent four weeks in flagstaff which was unbelievable right? amazing absolutely loved it you're yeah. up at altitude and mm. there's trails forever you can yeah. ride to your heart's content just yeah. great build up for this yeah it was amazing and i think actually the roads are quite similar to here like uh -huh. just long rolling it was really windy basically every day um so yeah it felt it felt like a really good prep kind of rolling into here what, and what are your goals for saturday oh uh, i mean the main goal is actually just put together like a complete performance mm -hmm. like I still don't think I've done an Ironman where I've done like a really solid swim bike and run yeah I've had a couple where like the bike's been really good but the run's not or the bike's been horrible and then the run's been quite good <laughs> so uh, I think trying to get the balance of actually you know doing a solid bike and being able to have a solid run off it um but yeah and I hope that if I put all that together that puts me somewhere in the top five Top five, there you go. There you <laughs> go, yeah. And so the rest of the season besides this is what? Um, so I've got a few bits that I don't think I can talk about yet in oh, June. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think it'll take many people much guessing to work out what that is. Um, but then I might do Challenge Roth again. It depends a bit on how this goes, how I recover, if yeah. I want to do another Ironman. Um, hopefully the PTO race in uh, uh, Canada. Cup, yeah, yeah. Oh, Canada. Oh, okay. no, I've Canadian got open. zero chance of qualifying for Collins Cup, okay. unless they give us a British team. But ah. even then, I'd probably struggle. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... But Canadian Open's a possibility. Canadian Open, definitely. I think that looks like a great race. Yeah. Uh, and then, not sure about Dallas Open. It's probably a bit close to Kona for yeah. me. Um, but probably a couple of other 70.3s and then hopefully head out to Maui for like four weeks before Kona. It's like rough plan. Yeah, you got um, a tough life going on here. Oh, let's go to Maui horrible. and let's go to <laughs> Flagstaff and let's just ride, run and swim. Do you miss the banking lifestyle? Uh, I'm still actually working two days a Are week. Are you really? Mm. Yeah, may need to do something kind of mentally, keep me occupied, but yeah. I'm on a, a very flexible contract where basically, you know, the chunks like this seven weeks I'm not working because um, right. we're not we can't work from America because of tax right. um, but I can work from Europe so like European camps I can still work mm. a little bit um, but yeah so I still I still feel like I have my toe kind of dipped in for well, a bit that's of something good. different yeah, yeah. Love it. thank you so much mm -hmm. Ruth appreciate taking time and uh, you know what this you will love this course mm. yeah, it's it suits you you like tough I like tough. You like tough. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Pacho Man, take us out. Here's to the golden moon. Here's to the silver sea. Most of all, here's the toast to you and to me. And breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Pacho Man. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. <laughs>